thanks for staying with us right here on Sunrise as we continue uh, this morning. I beg your pardon. Now, politicians are known for being involved in a widespread of rumors and scandals around the country and the world. And of course, we're asking today, these scandals, how do they affect their political decision making? And how does that filter down to me and you? Cheating, fraud, corruption, and a whole lot of other actions that some would deem as unacceptable seem to be the current of going ons of people who we call our leaders. And despite all the drama and scandals, not all South Africans see this as a problem. Now, joining us to speak on this is political analyst Jacques Matthew Agai from the Serve Leadership. And uh, remember, you can be part of our conversation this morning by giving us a call on 011-447-1742 or 011-447-1620. Your comments are also welcome on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Now, Jacques, good morning to you. Pleasure. When we talk, in, in, in that introduction, there's a lot of things that we, we've really thrown in. But the big question is around morality and ethics when it comes to our politicians. Can we even use those two in, in the same sentence when you're talking politicians? Yeah, I think it's <coughs> relevant for us to use this concept of morality and ethics. Whenever you've been appointed as a leader, you become a public figure. But generally, we are all public figures. But whenever you're appointed as a leader, you become a public figure. Whether you like it or not, there are people that really look up to you for everything they do. And in a situation whereby there's a lot of moral decadence at the moment, morality is very low. You can see what the kids are doing at schools, f fighting, mm. and also in the governments all over the world, and particularly in Africa, let me consider in Africa, you see a lot of corruption. <coughs> so when you are a leader, there's a need to consider what is called ethics. And what is ethics? Ethics is the concept of understanding what is right and what is wrong. But mm. beyond what is right and what is wrong, there is also a concept of understanding what is good and what is bad. Right. <coughs> versus wrong with politicians yes good and bad yes and 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 good and bad and if you go more further into subdivision you will still see that in what is good and in what is bad there are things that you do alone and you consider yourself and you sit alone and you say what i have done is it right but there are things that after you think about it consciously now you express it in terms of a behavior that the world now watches so as, as a leader, most, most often, some of the things that we congest, we build in our minds, we build in our hearts, are the things that we express outside. Okay. All right. I don't know if uh, this is the correct way of phrasing it, but as a country, for example, uh, we never used to spend time looking at like who people are privately and what they've done and their background and all of that. Okay, we're voting for them because they're part of this political party that we're supporting and this is a country that we're given and that's that. But we're sort of like starting to see a lot of things emerging in recent times, especially with politicians, a lot of like their, uh, you know, private life becoming public. Should we be looking at that in terms of like if they can deliver uh, on the job that is at hand? Yes, we should look into their own lives. You, you remember, I know, I know you will come later, but you remember for the case particularly of Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, mm. uh, the, the, the court struck the, the case when he said he do not want the, the, the paper to publish that article, but the court struck out the case. The reason is because there is something that is very important and that is public interest. For example, if you look into the Constitution, you look at Section, se section 32, mm -hmm. sub subsection 1A, yes. which it states very clearly that the public, based on the Constitution, the public have the right to access any information. And when the court look into the but issue... But is this, is this information in the interest of the public? Yes, this information is in the interest of the public. The reason being that anything that you do, the decisions that you take will affect some of your life affairs. Mm. For example, you could, you could favor the people when, when government opportunities come or any kind of favor comes, you could strictly favor the people that you're tight with mm. and that affect governance straight. Okay, well, we're also taking uh, your calls on 011-447-1742 or 011-447-1620. All right, Jacques, let's just go back to that. But if it's their private life, how does that affect uh, their work in office? Uh, you see, it's, it's considering the fact that you took such a position, you become a public servant, mm. and this is all over the world. There may be not any law in the Constitution that says that, okay, as a minister or as a leader, you should not do whatever secret you like want to do in terms of having a fair, you mm. know? So what, what happened is that it's relevant for us to have interest in you because 
everything you do affects governance. Mm. And if you know you're not interested in these issues, if you know you don't want public interest, then don't take the position. But as you take the position, you know that the public will be interested in this. Take an example of Donald, Do Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Yes. He had a similar issue. About 15 women came and said, no, he assaulted us. Mm. He, 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 I mean, and then he said he will take them to court. Mm. And that is what he has, he has, he has, he has never done. Mm. In fact, what this is teaching is that in leadership, this is teaching personal discipline. Mm -hmm. So once you become a leader, there's a need to be very, very disciplined in some areas. If you are not ready to be disciplined, do not take on the position. Okay, so now if these things emerge before the person is in power, in this case, you made Donald Trump as an example, and currently um, Cyril Ramaphosa, who's likely to become the ANC's president, should we reconsider uh, you know, who the position that they, they, they're going for and say, okay, then therefore this candidate doesn't qualify or is there a way that they can convince us uh, otherwise? And how do we distinguish between uh, the real story and just political tricks that could be happening at that time? Yeah, I know this is, this, is, this is actually vital. If you look very well, the stage at which we are is about uh, 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 the, 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 the contestation in ANC election, internal politics is very high. Mm. And I've seen that the deputy president is now consigned saying that no, this is a political gene that has been schemed, that has been used to bring his image down. But actually, he can go beyond that. And how can he do that? All that he needs to do is just to go and defend himself through the legal processes. I mean, if you say any, if you say, if you say someone has stolen money or someone has done something wrong, I mean, we have courts and our courts can be trusted. So all you need to do is to say, okay, you said I have done this. Just go there and and defend it. However, my my misunderstanding with that with the, I, with, with with the vice president is that he seems to emphasize that no, this is a political gym. gym. The mm. truth is that I have you done this, or and no, if you not. have done it, yeah. can you just say yes, so something like this? Happened. Can I apologize? Okay. And so, okay, the public, I'm sorry for what I have done. I will move forward. I've, I will check my life. This is this is actually this is good mm. that this is. Is, is this thing coming up now? Because it will also like inculcate some disciplines in our leaders. All right, let's uh, let's take a caller now. We've got I think it's Kenneth. Hello, Kenneth. Donald. Hi, Donald. Okay, it seems like we have lost the caller. There, we're taking your calls on 011 447 1742 or 011 447 1620. Okay, so now the question that also uh, uh, comes is like, um, can I be judged on my track record based on my work? Uh, versus when things that are personal about me uh, emerge. How do we, this morality and ethics uh, come into equation in that space? Um, we have norms in every society. Mm. And some of the norms have been studied and some of them have become laws in certain society. Mm. Unlike in America and Europe, in Africa, po polygamy is allowed. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but in polygamy, there are processes that are also, also involved. You take an example of the president. Uh, he has more than more than a wife, but that that official engagement, that official marital processes has been applied. Mm. So it is expected that in our own continent, since in some cultures they allow polygamy, if you want to do that, there's a way you can do it formally. Mm. So if you don't do it formally, because you are a public figure, people have to look up to you. Okay. And so if you if you if you get it wrong, they will they will talk about it. And like I said, what is important is come up and say, no, this is what I've done and it's actually wrong, and I'm sorry, I will move forward and desist from it.